Hi, I'm Tracy Sofra and welcome to the Women of Wealth podcast. I want to share a quote. I'm a bit of a quote girl and I love this particular quote and I want to share this with you and I want to talk about it in a little bit of detail. So here goes. Life isn't about waiting for the winds to change. Life is about learning to adjust your sails. Now, I hope that resonates with you because it gives me goosebumps every single time I read that. So let me let me break it down. Life isn't about waiting for the winds to change. So in the context of women waiting for society, governments, industry, businesses to give us what we want, um, you know, that's that we can't play that passive game anymore. That that's really the angle that I come from. It's a game of permission, submissiveness. It's kind of the way I look at it. Life is about learning to adjust your sails. So we need to stand up and step out, right? I'm 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 a bit of a responsibility, personal responsibility junkie. So what I mean by that is taking responsibility for what you want. And going for it and doing it for ourselves, waiting for change is a dangerous game for women. So I always say, what are we waiting for? We can't wait. So we are not going to wait for the winds to change. We could be waiting a long time. It is about adjusting our own sails because, you know what, I believe women, you know, I've been I've been talking to thousands of women for over 33 years and I, I feel that they're feeling misplaced in the world at the moment. They're confused and disconnected with who they are and what they want. You know, two of the most simplest questions you could ask someone. And I remember the first time someone said to me, well, what do you want, Trace? And it was literally like, what do you mean, what do I want? Like, do I actually have a choice? Um, you know, it was that confronting to me to be asked, what do I want? Because we really don't allow ourselves to think about these things. And I feel that nearly all of the women I speak to come from this place of not knowing who they are and what they want. Why does that happen? Well, you know, most of these women, much like myself, spend a lifetime being everything to everyone, right? Your mum, you're, you're, you're the spouse, you're the sister, you're the daughter, you're the co-worker, you're the best friend, you're everything. Um, and what I find that after working with thousands of women they're feeling disconnected with all of that because they've been everything to everyone, only to find themselves at the end of the day on their own, yeah? Um, and they're not exactly where they thought they would be. Um, and this is why I do what I do, yeah? Because I believe in a world where women live without compromise, without limits and without fear. And money is the key to something precious, something extraordinarily precious that we've been fighting for for generations. It's, it's make no mistake about this, money is power. And it sounds almost rude to say, right? Um, and I probably wouldn't have said it probably 10, 15 years ago, but you know what? I'm older now and um, the truth is the truth. And where I sit, I see that time and time again. Um, so we've been fighting for this for generations, for power, control and absolute freedom. So my purpose really is to empower women in the most impactful area of her life and that's her financial confidence. So with that said, what does that actually mean, her financial confidence, Trace? Well, if she is confident, she is clear and she is in control. And what I see when I close my eyes, I see a world where women are fearless, they feel complete and they're living a full and meaningful life. And they're playing this game on their terms. And she's going to offer you the key. The question is, will you take it? And do you actually want it? It starts with building your financial confidence, the key to unlocking your confidence in life. It has this, you know what I've seen over all of this time that I've been doing this, I see it ripple into other areas of women's lives. So they start off with building their financial confidence. And that confidence changes every other aspect of their lives. People around them start seeing change, wonder, mm, what's going on here? Some people get uncomfortable by, by the change. Um, and some of them lose friends and people along the way, but the change is real and it filters through every other aspect of their lives in their ability to make decisions about all of the other aspects of their lives, be it family, um, be it career, 
be it um, raising the kids, whatever it may be, that financial confidence actually filters through, trickles down, and um, it has this ripple effect across the board. Um, so having the ability to tackle any change, any obstacle, that's the fearless woman, right? With an inbound and inner confidence, certainty of self, and the ability to sit in that space and be okay. Be able to say, I'm okay. Um, I just want you to feel that for one minute. What does that feel like if you had that inner confidence that allowed you to feel okay and calm and at ease with yourself, yeah? So who am I? Um, I'm Tracy Soffer, as I mentioned at the start of the podcast. I am what I call the accidental accountant come financial advisor. You know, dance was my first love and um, life brought me here. It's extraordinary where life does um, take you. And you couldn't have two things um, that are polar opposites dancing to um, doing an accounting degree. But accounting has been brilliant to me and has allowed me to change my own life and has allowed me to feel my purpose. And I will be talking about purpose in, in further podcasts, but really to um, live out my purpose. Um, youngest of five girls. So um, five girls, mum and dad, and dad was um, a raving feminist. And how could he not be? He had five girls. And um, I was raised without any limiting beliefs um, of being a woman, if you like. I was never told you're a girl and you will or girls can only do this or I, I didn't have any of that um, language. I didn't, I, I just wasn't in that, it, it, it wasn't my world, if you like. Um, so anything that I wanted to do, I could um, and being told that I had the ability and the smarts to be able to conquer and do anything. Um, so empowering women has always been at my very core and it's how I feel and it's why I do what I do every day because I was raised like that. My father told me that. So I just, um, it's extraordinary at a young age, you you become what you're told. Um, and so he was very instrumental in my upbringing. And um, all I ever heard was you will become financially independent and you will go to university and you will be a strong woman in your own right. I never really heard one day you will get married and have children. Um, needless to say, uh, I was the typical career woman who had the kids and went, oh, my God. Um, <laughs> like it was it's quite extraordinary. But um, I've got two beautiful kids. My daughter, April, is 19 and she's extraordinary. And my son, Lucas, is 15 and equally so. So, it, you know, if, if you're wondering where all this passion comes from, that, that's, that's the, the root of it all. That's, that's really the guts behind why I do what I do. Now, you know, um, being an accountant and a financial advisor is my toolbox. It's my skill set. But why do I do it? And that is why I do it, because empowerment is at my very core. I have been around for 33 years, started my career as an accountant 33 years ago, I'm a certified practicing accountant, which is, you know, your postgrad. Um, then I went into financial planning because I love the idea of forward planning and I love the idea of creating wealth. Um, and I'm a certified financial planner. So across both professions for 33 years and in my own business across across both professions um, for 28 years, just clocked over in June. So uh, we have an accounting practice, software partners, chartered accountants, and a financial um, advisory practice, which is Softcorp Wealth. It keeps me very, very busy. I, um, I am known as a financial confidence expert, award-winning advisor. I've won many awards, published my first book in 2016 called Finding Financial Freedom, which really was a turning point for me because that was the stage where I was able to put all of my thoughts and everything that I knew to be true on paper and document it. And, um, you know, as much as it is um, extraordinary for people to read and, and, and learn, I felt the same thing for myself because it actually allowed me to get those thoughts out of my head and put them in some sort of sequential order and know them to be absolutely true um, from years of, uh, client experiences, which I am so privileged to have. People sit with me and tell me everything. It's a 
incredibly honourable, privileged position to be in. Not only that, throughout the the last 33 years, um, you got to put, pardon the pun, you've got to put your money where your mouth is, right? So if you're in advising and you're saying, hey, you know, Jane, um, this you should be doing this, um, I don't come from a place of um, just saying it. I come from a place of having done it. So I never advise on anything I wouldn't do or haven't done and always share my life experiences in terms of investing and um, how it's impacted my life, good, bad or indifferent. And I feel that that level of uh, sharing and being able to bring that to the table as an advisor is extraordinarily powerful. Uh, a lot of people get so much more out of that than rather just having the, the textbook answer to things. But, you know, that comes with, with time and age and having, having had the experiences personally. I'm a bit of a rule breaker, <clears throat> if you haven't noticed. And um, as I said, my first uh, love was dance. But it wasn't always like this from a, um, how can I say, um, uh, income or, or um, wealth uh, position point of view. I have my own money story, which I'd love to share with you. I talk about money story because it's incredibly powerful to be able to unearth that and then to be able to make decisions being fully aware of what that is and where that comes from. So let me talk to you about mine. I come from a family who lived from paycheck to paycheck. Um, there was no savings. Um, the word investment, um, I'm not sure anyone knew the word investment. And um, we just lived like that. There, You know, we, we had pretty much everything we needed. If anything needed to be purchased, it, there was no savings to purchase it. There was, you know, you went and got a loan and then you paid the loan off. And, and that's how it worked in my family with mum and dad when I was a kid. So I had to sit in this almost meditative space and go back, as I always say, in order to go forward and unearth all of this and really bring it to light. And i got to tell you, when when I went back and, and did this for myself, I had the biggest epiphany ever, which was, oh, my God, you know, I'm my father in terms of the way I conducted myself with, with money because money is a skill not taught. Nobody teaches you this stuff. You just grow up in a household that has its own money um, patterns, behaviours. I call it blueprint. It really is your blueprint. So that was my financial blueprint. And then I adopted that into my early adult life, right, because it's business as usual. Away we go. How, why should I know any better? Just because I'm educated and I'm an accountant and a financial planner and all this sort of stuff, um, particularly in my field, I should know better. However, I can point out a multitude of people that don't know better. So I went on, along in my early adult life and I did exactly the same thing. I had a credit card for discretionary spending. Um, if I needed anything, I got a loan and I lived from paycheck to paycheck. I did not save. I, well, what was saving? Until, uh, and now cast your mind back, um, this is pre uh, mobile phones, there was no internet. This is going back a, a fair bit. So um, you can imagine I'm giving away my age, but that's all good. I got a statement from the bank and it was my credit card statement. And have you ever had one of those out of body kind of moments where, I mean, it's split seconds, but it feels like it's a good couple of minutes where I'm looking at the statement and I'm kind of saying to myself, is that my name and is that the real balance and what is actually going on here? So I was having this out-of-body experience looking at my credit card statement and I had blown it out completely compared to the month before. Now, I at this point, um, my knees are starting to sort of give way, my stomach's turning and I'm trying to rationalise because we, we always love to rationalise stuff, right? So I'm trying to rationalise what is going on here and I come up with the answer. I've been hacked, clearly Clearly someone's hacked my credit card and um, I've got to get to the bank and I've got to put a stop to it as soon as possible, right? Okay. So again, no internet back in those days. I uh, got in the car, drove to the bank, waiting in line, you know, oh my God, waiting, waiting, waiting. Um, and then as soon as I heard next, please, I kind of ran to the counter, hung on, you know, clicking on to the end edge of the counter 
and kind of this verbal diarrhea of blah, 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 explaining what I just shared with you. And she could clearly see how distressed I was. And she said, Trace, um, just give me a second. And back in those days, they had those big monitors on the side. And she said, let's have a look at what's going on here. And needless to say, there was nothing going on but me. Um, with my, you know, each transaction she read out, it was very clear that it had been me. Um, and with my tail between my legs and total embarrassment, I walk out of the branch. And at this stage, I'm on the footpath outside the bank thinking, what the hell am I going to do now? And really, at that point, I said to myself, I am never, ever going to be in this position ever again. That was my turning point. And, I want, and it's really important to share that because everybody has a story. Everybody comes from somewhere when it comes to money. And understanding where you come from allows you to change that story. You don't have to be what happened at mum and dad. You don't have to be that. So uh, that was the start of, I guess, the first the first piece of um where I am now, like that, that was the journey, the start of the journey to, to what brought me here um, and cleaning up my own act in terms of my own money story and, and um, sorting out the credit card and going to another bank and then getting a personal loan and paying that off and chopping it up and reducing the, the limit and all the things that you know you're meant to do, but understanding that I needed to change and change needed to happen swiftly. So, once I understood that, it, look, change isn't easy, right? I mean, you know, I, I'm no one's fairy godmother. I'm not going to sort of wave a wand and go, poof, you're all fixed and you're all good to go. The honest truth is that it takes time. Um, it, it takes you have a go. Um, if it doesn't quite work out, you have another go and you just keep going. It's continuous improvement and being kind to yourself and asking yourself the key questions. Why do I want to make this purchase? Is this financial decision going to hurt me or is it going to help me? And being able to stop and ask myself those questions each time has helped me immensely in my ability to be able to change my own money story and become a person that actually doesn't do any of that anymore. And it's quite extraordinary given where I come from and working with thousands of women over the years and, sh and, and them sharing their money stories with me and their ability to unearth that and change it for themselves and the elation that they share with me, uh, you know, there is no better reward as an advisor of hearing those stories come to light. So this podcast really is about all of that and so much more. It is about sharing my personal journey for creating wealth. It is about sharing my system for creating financial independence, which is where it all started, as I mentioned, through that experience and then having the ability to change that for myself, um, creating programs to be able to work with other women to do that, writing my first book to be able to do that, and now sharing it through the podcast. You know, the first 10 episodes, what I'm going to be exploring really is understanding where you currently are in your life. Um, the current state of status quo, I call it, is where women are stuck and don't know what they want and who they are and how to progress forward because, as I mentioned earlier in this podcast, they, they've been so many things to so many people that they're at a crossroad now. It's like, well, what do I do now? Um, and that's a scary place to be. But, but understanding that and working through that, then understanding your experience and your environment, the environment that you're in, um, make no mistake, will dictate whether you succeed financially or not. Um, and the experiences that you've had that you bring to the table, we all have um, a level of life experience and um, uh, different traumas that we've gone through and whether they're good, bad or indifferent, we draw on them to make, to make decisions about what's happening in our lives now. So exploring that and understanding that to exploring your money story um, and understanding that in order to go move forward, we need to go back and unearth that and then unveil who we are today and then progress from there with that two, with those two bits of powerful information. 
understanding your purpose. You know, what is purpose? Um, a lot of people talk about why, but it's probably the, the single most important element in understanding how to be financially successful because if you do understand the reason you do why what you do, um, you will make better financial decisions that serve you and that provide fulfilment. They won't be inauthentic. They'll be real and they will represent who you are at your very core. Mingling that purpose and that why with a set of values and then setting goals based upon those values, um, it is the only way that I've seen values, um, goals succeed because if they are not connected to your values and the going gets tough, you, t- you kind of um, fade away. Um, and then we get into the nitty-gritty stuff where um, we talk about your current financial position and how far you've got to go. How do you know how to do that? So we talk about that. We talk about your current reality, you know, what, where are you financially? Where do you want to be? How much work have we got ahead of us? And what sort of plan do we have to be able to achieve that? Understanding, dare I mention the word cash flow? Cash flow is simply money in and out of the, the household, right? But nobody really understands cash flow and nobody really um, gives it. Uh, look, I'll go back to saying nobody really understands cash flow. People think that um, uh, successful people who make a lot of money, well, they must be really well off. And I'm here to tell you nothing could be further from the truth. I've seen so many successful people who make a lot of money that scratch the surface and there's no wealth underneath that. So again, it's about understanding cash flow um, and then and then knowing what to do with it, how to invest it, where you should invest and the simplicity of investing. You know, my, um, my industry, the financial planning industry, unfortunately, um, to their detriment, make investment is investment and the ability to invest uh, this extraordinary thing that it's oh my goodness, you know, only a handful of people could possibly do that and nothing could be further from the truth. It's simplicity at its best, but um, it's not presented in that way. So I'm going to share all of that with you. Um, and then then I want to share with you uh, uh, something that was so insightful for me and changed everything for me along my financial journey. And that's understanding debt and the power of leverage using other people's money to create wealth for yourself. It's quite powerful. And, and again, having worked with thousands of people and, and having that, um, you know, the minute I mentioned leverage and debt and, and having that ability to borrow money to invest to create further wealth, I usually get, no, 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 we don't want to do that. We don't, no, I don't like debt. No, no, I, I need to, um, I need the cash before I do that. So I'm going to rock your world and I'm going to get you to think differently about debt and leverage. And that's going to change absolutely everything in the way that you perceive creating wealth and the way that um, you t- what next steps you do in, or- in order to be able to use that um, lever, which is the leverage lever, if you like. And finally, really protecting what you love and yourself through um, insurances and wealth um, um, through estate planning. Um, not so exciting, not so sexy, I get it, but so critical because you work a lifetime to create all of this for yourself and your family. And if you don't look at the contingencies and they're the contingencies, what if something goes wrong? What if you, what if you need to, um, what if your income stops because you got injured and you don't have income protection? What happens to the overall plan of putting away a certain amount a month to create wealth? What happens to that plan? God forbid, what happens if something happens to you and you haven't got the right levels of insurances, or or the um, or your estate is uh, your estate planning is not done, it always ends up in the wrong hands, and it's an absolute debacle. I see it, seen it quite often, and um, and it's not pretty, and it's distress for no reason at all. So all of those things are going to be coming up in the next ten podcasts. So make sure to subscribe. Subscribe now to our podcast. I would love for you to listen to all my little pearls of wisdom and everything that I've experienced over the years. Um, and subscribe on your favourite podcast platform. We're launching the first four episodes, so you can go ahead and listen to all of them right now if you wish, so you won't have to wait. All you've got to do is subscribe, and away we go. 